August 15th, 2019, 3 or 6 p.m. This is episode 586. First off, I want to give a shout out to my son, Clayton Michael Jones. Um, happy birthday. He is 29 years old today. That can't be right. I can't have a 29 year old kid. Let me do the math. Ah, oh, crap, that is right. Um, happy birthday, kid. He probably does not listen to these at all. Watch these, whatever. <laughs> I should say something embarrassing about him when he was a kid, and then I'd find out if he watches these, but I'm not going to do that. So, it is his birthday, so let's not do that. Um, boom, 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 boom. I said this episode 586 today, I am drawing, uh, Trump and his bone spurs and the whole trade war thing. It's really funny that Donald Trump says, um, that... You know, tariffs are not taxes, that China will end up paying all the tariffs and stuff. It won't affect consumers. But, hey, let's hold off on, this, on the next round of tariffs until after the, the Christmas shopping season. Uh, just in case they do hit consumers. But how can they hit consumers if they don't hit consumers? If China's going to pay them all. Hmm, no. This is why the stock market, one reason why, why it's hurting is because... Um, Donald Trump is, is an idiot, and you have to think, this guy is going to, like, if we get into actual financial trouble, this is the guy who's going to be in the White House, who's going to try to solve it. Um, I mean, granted, presidents don't really have all that much effect on the economy, depending. I mean, they can affect it. Um, but Donald Trump, just like everything else he has in his life, he inherited a good economy. He did. I know conservatives argue, oh, this is a Trump economic miracle. And they called it that two months after he came into office. I mean, they ignored the six years before Trump came into office of the economy improving every single month, you know, adding two, uh, two million jobs a year, at least. I think that's right. And Trump's has actually added fewer per year than Obama. But as soon as Trump came to office, conservatives were like, eh, it's an economic miracle to where before that, it was like the worst recovery ever. But they totally forget that it was a recovery, and it was a recovery that was needed because of a Republican's economic policies beforehand. Um, I mean, as usual, a Democrat cleans up a Republican mess, a Republican comes in and messes up again, then a Democrat would have to come back and clean it up again. Uh, the economy is probably going to go south at some point. Uh, I mean, it always does. It goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down. Depends on how far down it goes. Will it be uh, a little, a little recession, or will it be bad? Um, I hope it's not bad. The, the one thing that, that is a miracle is that, I mean, the economy has been so good that even Donald Trump couldn't fuck it up. But he is trying. He is trying hard, hard to mess it up um, with these stupid tariffs. Now, nobody argues that China has taken advantage of, of us over the years, but. A trade war is not the solution to the problem. And if anyone who, who's going to negotiate with Donald Trump in the future, all you have to learn is just wait. He will either, well, he'll probably fold. He's not a great negotiator. He says he is, but he's not. He's proven he's not. Um, and now he, he's held off on these. Now, hopefully what he's going to do is just totally forget about the terrorists by December 15th when, they're supposed to, when the rest are supposed to roll out. He'll just hope not do it and hope that the rest of us don't notice <laughs> it's gone because <laughs> the thing is he blinked and china hasn't moved except to add more tariffs on us and find new places for them to shop now your your stores like say you go to walmart or target they, they have three options they can find and someone else to deliver the goods like say um my new t-shirt was made in honduras um and i'm wearing today and yeah, the next round of tariffs to China, they will include clothing. They will hit Ivanka and Trump's products, which might be another reason why they delayed it. Um, but okay, so the consumers can, I mean, the, the retailers can find another source for the, for the shit, or they can eat the cost themselves. And if it's something small, like 10%, they'll eat a lot of it. They won't pass it on to the consumers. But some of them already have done that. Um, or whenever you start hitting them with 25% and crap like that, they are going to pass those to the consumer. Um, they'll pass on a whole bunch of it and you you will feel the effects of this and it will affect the economy I'm playing my deal today it's just easy to pick up and I want to do this video and get over with before I start it uh, today's project for CNN um, turn on the TV and there's more and there's new news 
right now, the White House is saying tariffs are a gift. Are a gift. And tariff delays are a gift. Well, get it straight, man. Get it straight. Someone commented on my blog the other day that they wished that I would talk more about the ideas and, and who influences me, what other cartoonists I like. I think we talked about that before, and I don't understand why talking about cartoonists I like on every video. Uh, what that would give me, because we, we're close to 600 of these. I'm going to say the same names every single video 600 times so far. Um, but there's a bunch. If you ask me about them in the comments and such, about particular cartoonists, but I like them, I'll, I'll give you a yay. Um, I also want to know, and someone else has talked about this before, how do you get your ideas? Where did this idea come from? I don't know. I had this other idea and had it sketched out, and I thought it was okay. So it was pretty good, and I'm going to send it to CNN. But then I thought of this one, and I just really like the whole bone spur thing and the image of him hopping and holding his foot up like he could actually be that limber. I just found that funny, so I went with it. And I dug it. I had fun drawing it, and I'm not really good at military stuff, but I just had a good time with it. I woke up at 2 a.m. A little girl woke me up, and I was like, "Well, I might as well get up and go to work." <laughs> She's gonna crawl in bed and kick me out. Um, so I did that. Uh, re one reason I don't ever really talk about how my ideas come to me is because usually I can't remember. I don't know because I usually get my ideas after a lot of pacing. I just walk around back and forth. All right, shout outs. Uh, you're all still going on about. The blizzard. Someone complained about that. Why are you talking about ice cream? Should we talk about the cartoons? All right. We're done with the ice cream talk. Okay. It's been like three days. And she calls me a basic bitch. Okay. I thought we were done. All right. Now we're done. Um, Robert Cortino said, Cuccinelli is about what I would expect for the caliber of the best people that this president would hire. Cuccinelli's right in line with Stephen Miller. You know? So you're right there, Robert Cortino. Totally. Amanda said, date night next Friday is going to be pretty great. It's a surprise though. No foie gras or... Uh, Bitchy suey soup. Yeah, the last cartoon she gave me, uh, the the fooey grass thingy, foie gras, foie gray. I, she told me last night how to pronounce it, and I told her I forget, and I did. And the bitchy suey bitchy suey the soup. I actually looked that one up myself, but I don't really know what it is other than like cold potato soup. It was in the first Batman movie with Michael Keaton. That was in the, the article I read about it. So, uh, I. Right. A man says, look, if you don't, if you're still talking about the lizards. And she's saying my statement's bullshit. All right, we're moving on from the ice cream, okay? It's been like three or four days. I, I think we should have a timeline on these, uh, a shelf life of these things for like two more videos on, on topics that are off topic. Um, TJ Thoreau might want to make me go back to talking about blizzards. I wonder if you're going to rip on the Bill Clinton in a dress painting Epstein had. If it's legit, that says a whole lot about the corruption of the Clintons, don't you think? I mean, you use imagery and symbolism every single day. You're right about that. What do you mean if... What does that say about the corruption of the Clintons if he has a painting of Bill Clinton? You're going to have to tell me what that says about the Clintons, okay? Okay? Because you have to explain that to me. I don't see what that has to do with the with the Clintons at all, other than he has a weird-ass painting of Bill Clinton, which is really, really weird. You're going to blame Bill Clinton because Epstein... Dude, if I paint you in a dress, is it, is it your fault? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll do the cartoon if I think of it as an analogy, if it turns into something bigger than just, you know... The guy had it hanging in his house. I mean, I don't know. Don't know what that means. Just don't you know. All right, guys. Thanks for coming by. Click the red button and uh, be a subscriber. You uh, leave a comment. I would give you a shout out. Okay, probably. Maybe. Goodbye.